Now, it's one of the capital's tallest structures, nicknamed by some as the Eiffel Tower of the South. But have you ever wondered what goes on inside the Crystal Palace transmitter? Originally built to broadcast output for the BBC, these days it beams programmes from all broadcasters into millions of homes. And Thomas McGill was given rare access to the tower and the workings underneath. A lot of people, they consider this, um, particularly locally, not as um, an eyesore, but as, as a homing beacon. Crystal Palace transmitter in South London, one of the capital's most visible towers. Paul's job is to maintain it, a role that makes him a very happy man. I absolutely love them. I'm a Marston transmission tower um, geek. I, I feel privileged when I look at the, um, not only its, its beauty, its uniqueness as, as a structure, but also its history and its importance to um, people of London. That history dates back to 1956 when it was manned by engineers in smart suits. Their job was to beam programmes directly into millions of homes from the labyrinth of wires, computers and machines that lie underneath. So here we come into the beating heart of the operation, the transmitter room. Almost 70 years on, the transmitter's job has barely changed, even if the technology has. This is the amplifier, so this is where it comes together, we turn it into a TV signal, we combine it and send it up for transmission. At 219 metres tall, it's one of London's tallest structures, swamping the likes of the London Eye, which is 135 metres high, and Big Ben, which is a mere 96 metres tall. But how did the much-loved landmark end up in South London with its unusual design? Because of the small footprint of the site, had to build this lattice tower, and a lot of people compare it to the Eiffel Tower, and it's a very similar design in that we can have the height, but with a small footprint. Despite his job, Paul has no plans to climb the structure, unlike this cameraman 70 years ago who captured the city, embracing the very latest in technology. Who would have thought decades later that Crystal Palace Transmitter is still an essential part of our broadcasting infrastructure? Thomas McGill, BBC London.